What is a marker? And I don't mean a drawing marker. I'm referring to a marker in a pair of manufacturing. So a marker is basically a stencil that illustrates how a garment is going to be cut, how the pattern pieces of that garment are going to be cut. So for example, if I want to cut this shirt in production, I have the pattern, the pattern is being graded to the different sizes. The next thing is to cut the fabric, right? A marker is going to be created by a marker planner who is basically going to take all the pattern pieces of that shirt and rearrange them in a way that will have the best consumption of fabric. Then this will be printed on a paper, which is called the marker. And that marker is being used by the cutter to cut the pieces. So basically the cutter will lay out the fabric, put the marker on top of this layers of fabric and cut the pieces from the fabric this way. So instead of, for example, if you ever cut your own sample, you know that you take the pattern of the pieces manually yourself and you start to arrange them to have the best consumption of fabric, right? That's done ahead of time, done as a marker, given to the cutter, so he or she do not need to do that manually. They just take the marker, put it on the layers of fabric, and cut the pieces from that. What I wanted to talk about today is, I wanted to give you a couple of things to think of when you're creating a product and how you can utilize marker better. Just a couple of tips that will help you get better consumption, hopefully save you some money, but really get the best out of your marker. The first thing is, and that is something that I've seen so many mistakes done skipping that step. So pay attention to this one. A marker is being made based on the width of the fabric. So one of the things that you want to do, especially when you're cutting fabric for the first time, you want to measure the actual cuttable width of that fabric and have a marker made to that. In other words, many times we'll order fabrics and the fabric mill will tell us that the fabric width is, let's say, 58 inches. Now, if you'll go and just tell the marker planner, hey, make a marker based on 58 inches, what can happen is that when you physically get the fabric and you measure the width, you'll probably realize that even if the fabric is measured to be 58 inches, which in most cases it doesn't because there's some tolerance, so it might be 57, might be 56, might be more. But even more important for you and for making the marker is the actual cuttable of that fabric. In other words, even if I have a 58 inches fabric and it measures to be 58 inches, the cuttable might be less because on both sides, they're the salvage and that salvage will eat some of the fabrics. It's part of the fabric that I can't really use. So normally I will have at least half inch or an inch on each side that is not usable. So for example, a 58 inches fabric will end up being only 56 inches cuttable, which means that if I made a marker based on a 58 inches width, and I want to try to cut this 56 inches cuttable fabric now, I will not be able to use this marker. That means we're doing the marker, extra cost, extra time, frustration all around. So always get the fabric in your hand first, measure it. Make sure you have the right cuttable and have the marker made for that cuttable width. Second thing to think of, when you design or when you make the pattern, you can keep the marker thoughts in your head. And what I mean by that is, if you know what fabric you're going to use and you have an understanding of the width of the fabric, try to think about that when you design the product or when you make the pattern. Because many times you can really avoid a lot of the 
issues by really just thinking about them ahead of time. So if you design a garment and it has, let's say, a full skirt, but your fabric is only 44 inches or 42 inches cuttable, then sometimes you might want the skirts to be really full and it won't fit in the, in the, in the fabric width. And all of a sudden you have to figure out a way to turn it around, cut it into different pieces and so on and so on in order to fit this into the fabric. But you can think about these things ahead of time. You can keep that in mind. Also, don't forget that there are gradings. So even if your pattern, let's say you're making your first pattern or your base pattern in size small, and it fits nicely into 42 inches, don't forget that there's grading. And if you go up to size large or extra large, the pieces are gonna get bigger and therefore might not fit. So many times when you make a pattern, when you design the product, you can think about these things and avoid a lot of this by addressing it in a much earlier stage. And I've seen this many times. So if you have odd pieces in the pattern, figure out a way to maybe avoid them or make them more user-friendly user for a marker so you can fit more pieces around this. Or if you have like a long waistband, maybe you can cut it into two pieces because then it's going to be just an odd piece standing in the middle of the marker that you can't really use anything around that to cut. So these things to think of and really address before you even get to make the marker. So by the time the marker is done, it's a lot easier to get it done and the consumption can be tighter. Another thing to think of is there are other ways to make sure that the consumption of the fabric is tight. And so, for example, a regular marker is a marker where every size is separate. So all the pattern pieces for size more are separate as one section, the medium is one section, large, and so on and so on. Another way to save fabric when you create a marker is if you have pattern pieces that by the time they're arranged together, there's still a lot of fabric that's not used or used well enough. One of the ways to go around this is to create what we call a double marker or AB marker. And what that means is that instead of having a section that only has one size small in it, maybe I can lock together two size smalls and make better use out of this fabric. So for example, what would happen is that if I have a double marker for size small, something to keep in mind is that every time I cut size small, I'm cutting two pieces, which means that your cutting ticket needs to have units for size small there are, that are um, not odd numbers. In other words, I can't just cut five smalls. I need to cut six or four. Make sense? Another way to work around this, if double marker is not a good fit, and by the way, for double marker, you are paying for a double marker. So there's that part to consider. And many times if you cut smaller units and the fabric is not as expensive, then actually making a double marker can be more expensive. However, if we really want to think about sustainability and use more of the fabric and waste less than double marker, even if it's more expensive, will make that happen for us and help us consume less of the fabric or waste less fabric, I should say. Another way to work around this is to lock two, the two sizes together. So for example, something that I can do is if I, let's say I arrange the, the size small and I see that there's you know some room in the fabric, I can maybe lock the size small with size extra large together and put the, the pieces of the size small pattern and the pieces of the extra large pattern together lock them all together, arrange them all together in one section and use the fabric in a much better way, meaning waste less fabric. However, 
something to keep in mind when that happens or if I choose to do that. The number of units that are going to be cut out of the size small will need to be the same number of units that are going to be cut out of the size extra large because they're tied together. In other words, I cannot cut five pieces of small and 10 pieces of extra large. I'm gonna to need to cut even five and five, 10 and 10, six and six, whatever it is, because once that pattern is laid out on the fabric and the cutter is cutting it, they are cutting one size small, one extra large together every time. Third method to work with markers, if you really have like an odd shaped piece or very long piece that doesn't really fit nicely with all the pieces, what they can do is they can do a drop off. What it means is they create a drop off section just for this piece separately. So all the other pieces of that pattern are locked together. And then that specific piece that maybe is odd or long or that doesn't fit well has its own section. And I can then stack X number of that piece together. But anyway, all of these things are techniques that a marker planner knows of. What you should keep in mind is that always give them the cuttable width of the fabric. Make sure that your cutter must is very clear because your cutter must is going to separate your pattern into the different sections, meaning self fabric, lining, fusible, or anything else, combo fabric, things like this. And when a marker is being made, a marker is being made separately for each and one of these sections. So if the cutter must is not clear and right, showing really how many sections and what are the pieces that are going into each section, then the marker is not gonna be done right. And therefore you're gonna have mix up or pieces that are cut out of the wrong fabric. You wanna make sure that you provide that information to your marker and grading uh, person so they can get you the best result. And you can always tell them how many units you're producing. And if you want them to think about maybe a double marker or really tell them, I want the best consumption of fabric. So if you guys have other thoughts, ideas of how I can rearrange that, let me know. Usually they can do a draft of what it would look like and tell you, hey, if we'll do it this way, we can save you X yardage. Or if we do it this way, you'll be able to do better on the marker and so on and so on. And give you the opportunity to choose 